Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond! Back once again with our annual day of reflection. I am really running out of ways to start these videos. Today we're going to be celebrating my 7 year anniversary of Let's Playing. This was the first year in the second half of my Let's Playing journey, and it was certainly a memorable one, filled with all sorts of new and exciting projects. I hope you enjoyed them just as much as I did making them. As usual, there's a lot to talk about in this video, so get comfortable. But first, let's look back on all of the adventures we went on together in Year 7. Starting the year off was a Let's Play that has been in the works for a very long time. You all knew it would be coming eventually, but it was finally time for me to release my Let's Play of Code of Princess. What I find fascinating about this Let's Play is that it has a completely different final form than it would have had if I had gotten to LP it back in Year 4 like I originally wanted to. If I had gotten it done back then, this would have been a 3DS Let's Play, but since it took so long for me to get a handle on those types of recordings, I was rewarded with an unexpected and super enjoyable HD remake on the Nintendo Switch. I wound up making this a hybrid Let's Play of both the 3DS and the Switch version, showing off the Switch gameplay but also using the 3DS version's English voice acting for the cutscenes. It was really fun to put it all together, as I had never really done anything like it before. I also really enjoyed all of the bonus videos we had for this LP, from the Blade Strangers and Crystal Crisis videos to the live streams that showcase the game's multiplayer mode, which are still coming out by the way. I'm honestly kind of shocked that this Let's Play is as short as it was. With all the work that went into it, I definitely wasn't expecting it to be less than 20 episodes. But lo and behold, here we are. If you've been around long enough, you know full well just how much I love this game, and I'm so thrilled that I finally got to share my love for this game with all of you. Seeing the sudden burst of Code of Princess content appear out of nowhere within the last couple of years has been an absolute joy for me to see, and I certainly hope that this won't be the last time we hear from Solange and her gain of misfit heroes. Up next is a rather unusual Let's Play for my channel, but one that I was very excited for, and that is my blind Let's Play of Detroit Become Human. This was a game that I was hoping to see come to life for years. Ever since we saw the Kara video back in 2012, I kept on wishing and wishing for it to be made into a full-fledged game. I had wanted to let's play a game of this style for a very long time, but every time I thought I had found a good fit for this position, I wound up already beating the entire game before I could record it. And I feel that a lot of the fun in these types of games is experiencing it blind. So when Become Human was finally announced, I knew that this would be the one. The game's graphics are absolutely stunning to say the very least, the amount of branching paths for even the slightest little thing is amazing. You could spend days just trying to uncover all the different endings within this game. In terms of the story, however, I honestly wasn't too crazy about it. I still had fun and enjoyed the LP, but when comparing it to games like Heavy Rain or Until Dawn, I kinda wish this game did a bit more for me in terms of its unique character development or intriguing story elements. It's certainly not a bad game and it is worth checking out, but as far as the interactive movie genre goes, I've seen other games do it better. Still though, it was a very fun and easygoing LP. Nothing else to really say about it, other than the fact that it was the very first LP to showcase my new assistant slash mascot, Teresa Bell. She took Mackie's place this year and has been an absolute joy to work with, and I'm so happy to see that the reception to her has been so positive as well. But back to the LPs. Up next is a game that has been on my to play list for a very long time. After three years of dodging spoilers from the largest internet phenomenon in recent years, I finally got a chance to experience the legendary game, Undertale. Being completely honest with you all, I worked tirelessly to avoid spoilers for this game. I knew of the characters, but I had no clue what they were like or what kind of story they were attached to. All I knew was that this was a game where you could save literally everyone, or kill literally everyone. The Earthbound comparisons were more than enough for me to become interested in this game. But to hear so many people saying such high praise about this game for so stinking long, going as far as to say that it changed their life, and made them cry more than they have in any other game that they've played before it, I had to play it eventually. So what kept me so long? Well of course, da 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 da, it was the good old issue of not being able to record Steam games. I tried as best as I could to get Steam recordings up and running so I could finally experience this legendary game, and when I finally did, well, a certain other revolutionary title took priority at the time. Undertale was just never in the right place at the right time for me. Even when it finally released on PS4, which I was super ecstatic about by the way, I just kept on having to put it off for one reason or another. I knew that it was going to be a blind LP since this game seemed to be all about choice and whatnot, but because of that, I had no clue as to how much time I would be needing in order to get this LP done. 
so I couldn't release it near the end of the year because I wouldn't know if I would be able to make the yearly deadline or not. So when year 7 rolled around and I was finally able to breathe for a moment, I had just about had it with waiting. I finally got to play this legendary game. And yeah, it lived up to every single expectation I had for it. And for better or for worse, I wound up doing a full 100% playthrough. First was my initial neutral run where I'm getting myself situated within the world and its story, as well as making a couple mistakes. Then things became a bit less blind when I did my pacifist and genocide runs. I thought it was actually kind of cool that I was able to have this be both a blind LP and also sort of a not blind LP. Since I had to play through the game three and a half stinking times and whatnot, could it have been a bit more clean if it was 100% not blind? Probably. But I still loved getting to share my first experience with all of you, as well as the sort of narrative I was able to weave together due to it not being blind. <sighs> and of course, ever so conveniently, right before I'm about to release the final episode for this Let's Play, Undertale gets a stinking sequel announced. See you in three years when I get around to Let's Playing that game! <laughs> yeah, you think I'm joking, I'm really not. Up next is our yearly return to the Mario Party franchise. We finally make our way to the GameCube Mario Party titles with Mario Party 4, or as I called it, Daisy Party. My past two Mario Party Let's Plays had an increasing number of guest commentators tag along for the ride, and while I really enjoyed doing that setup for those LPs, there was just no way that I was going to manage to rope together four different commentators for each board in this game. So I had to do something different, and by different I mean more of the same. I went and did this LP by myself this time around. The guests in 2 and 3 were more so to liven up the commentary since I didn't really have all that much experience or attachment to those Mario Party titles, so I didn't really think that I'd have much to say about them. Mario Party 1 is such a fascinating beast to look back on since the game hadn't completely developed its identity yet, so I had plenty of stuff to talk about with that one. And as for Mario Party 4, it was one of my childhood Mario Party games, so I had no shortage of conversation topics. That, on top of the fact that it had a story mode to play through, I think I was good to just go through it on my own. I certainly had a fun time with this one. This remains as my second favorite Mario Party, so it's always a joy to go back and play this game. However, it still wasn't a totally normal LP. I wound up incorporating the Game Boy Classic Super Mario Land into this LP as well, having it be a little bonus game that got shown off at the end of each board. Since I was focusing primarily on Daisy for this LP, I thought it would be fitting to combine these two games into one Let's Play. What, you think it's a bit of a stretch? Perhaps, but it's my channel so I can do whatever the fruit I want. I mentioned at the end of this LP that I'll be saving Mario Party 5 to be my last Mario Party Let's Play, since that's the one that means the most to me. So up next on the channel is going to be Mario Party 6, and at this point in time I honestly have no idea what I'm going to be doing to make that Let's Play stand out from all the rest. Here's hoping that it lives up to the wacky and off-the-wall antics that these Mario Party LPs have been known for over the years. After Mario Party 4 was another game with a significant number 4. Yeah, speaking of stretching to find similarities and things. It was finally time to complete a long-running franchise on my channel. For this was my Let's Play of The Walking Dead Season 4, The Final Season. Whoo boy! I can go back and forth between being completely speechless and having a million things to say about this one. The Walking Dead started out on my channel as a kind of a weird contrast to everything else that had been seen on my channel before it. It was very different and not something that a lot of people were interested in watching, but it was a franchise that I truly, truly adored. I had already played the first two games when I finally decided to let's play them, so those LPs sadly didn't get to be blind. And boy, I sure wish they did, both for the blind experience and also in hopes that I wouldn't have included the stupid Lee pun counter. My god, I still regret that so stinking much. But anyway, I had three more Walking Dead LPs ahead of me after those first two, and these were all completely blind. There was the Michonne side series, which was a major wake-up call that these LPs were going to get a lot harder since they were going to be blind, and I would need to really think about my decisions before making them. There was the long-awaited Season 3 that sadly did not live up to my expectations at all, and honestly left me begging for the series to come to an end. So when they finally announced that Season 4 would be the final season, I remember just immediately getting chills. I was all like, oh god, this is really it. Even though I had wanted it, I wasn't emotionally ready for it. I had no idea how they planned to wrap up this type of a story in a way that was both complete and fulfilling. And after how poor I thought Season 3 was, I honestly didn't have a whole lot of high hope for this game. 
I was stinking wrong. Season 4 knocked it out of the stinking park. This isn't just the best Walking Dead game. This is one of the best games I have ever played and one of the best stories I have ever experienced. They pulled out all of the stops with this one. It was truly their magnum opus and swan song and whatever the heck else you want to call it. I urge you, if you haven't tried this game out yet, or if you drop the series after the first couple of seasons or so, please stick it out to the end and play the final season. It is incredible. And to think that we came so close to not even getting this game finished. I was recording this LP as the episodes were releasing, and it seemed like at the time that season 4 was going to be left unfinished, due to Telltale Games going bankrupt. I was heartbroken and didn't know what to say about it all, but even if this game had never been finished, I was totally okay with uploading the first two episodes of this LP to my channel and having this LP never get finished. I enjoyed those first two episodes more than the entirety of seasons 2 and 3 combined. I wanted to give thanks to Telltale and showcase the work that they had done for this game, so I uploaded the LP thinking it would never get finished. But if you're just joining us, I am overjoyed to tell you that this game did get finished thanks to Skybound Games picking up the broken pieces of Telltale and rehiring as many of the original employees as possible. This story needed to be told. It's been an emotional journey dating all the way back to 2012. I couldn't be happier with how they ended it all. It's by far the most emotional I've gotten with any Let's Play I've recorded, so if you'd like to watch it just to hear me bawl my eyes out, you're more than welcome to. Okay, so much for me being speechless about all this. Long story short, I adore The Walking Dead, the final season, and I am so happy that Clementine's journey got finished in such a spectacular fashion. Up next was a bit of a different project for my channel. Rather than a new Let's Play, I was continuing an old one. I went back to my Let's Play of Pokemon Emerald from Year 5 and continued the adventure under the name Pokemon Delta Emerald. The premise was to showcase the aftergame of Emerald as well as the Delta episode of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, meaning that I had to delete my original Alpha Sapphire save file that I had already fully beaten and replay the game again with my Emerald team just so I could get back to the end of the main game and would be able to access the Delta episode once again. Jeez, for someone who hates the Hoenn game so much, I sure played it a heck of a lot of times. But seriously, it was nice to have a more laid-back Pokemon experience on the channel for once. There were only like 6 bios to show off for this LP, which I had already made back when Emerald was going on, and this side series only lasted 12 episodes. Each odd number episode showed off the GBA side of things, while the even numbered ones showed off the 3DS side. I really didn't know how I was going to put it all together, but I'm very happy that I finally got around to doing this. It's been an idea I've had for a very long time, and was meant to be a celebration of me finally getting my DS and 3DS recordings all up and running. All in all, I had fun with it, and I hope you did too. Up next is a different type of Mario RPG for my channel. It was finally time for me to begin the Mario & Luigi series of games with my Let's Play of Mario & Luigi Partners in Time. This was the first Mario & Luigi game that I ever played, so I found it kind of difficult to go back and play Superstar Saga over the years. I don't find it required for a Let's Player to play every single game in a series when they start one up on their channel, so I was okay with skipping over Superstar Saga and beginning with Partners in Time. This Let's Play was... an experience, to say the absolute least. For whatever reason, I decided that it would be a really good idea to record the majority of it while I was sick as a dog, so that was a bucket of fun right there, having to edit out all those coughs and sniffles and all that fun stuff. It certainly made for a different experience at the very least, I guess, and I still had fun with the LP as a whole. This game still holds up as being a very dark and drastically different tone of storytelling for Mario's standards, I had a lot of fun going back to this game and also seeing just how easy it was for me, since my first playthrough was such a struggle due to me being absolute trash at video games back in the old days. I also wasn't planning on having voice actors for this LP, but since my voice was next to completely gone by the end of it, I sorta of had no other choice at that point. Well, I guess I could've post-commentated it once I got better, but we'll try not to think about that too much. Partners in Time is my favorite game in the Mario & Luigi franchise and one that I am very happy that I got to show off to people. While I won't be showing every game in the franchise on my channel, this won't be the last you'll ever hear from it. So I hope you'll enjoy any future Mario & Luigi LPs when the time comes! Okay, enough with the time puns. Up next was this year's April Fool's Day LP, the classic childhood title, Putt Putt Saves the Zoo! 
The trick this time was that I LP'd Freddy Fish in year 5 and it WASN'T the April Fool's Day LP. But then in year 7, I catch everyone by surprise by LPing Putt Putt Saves the Zoo and having it actually BE the April Fool's Day LP! Mwahahahaha! It's the ultimate plan that nobody saw coming! Nor does anybody really care. Anyway! This was the Putt Putt game from my childhood, so just like with Freddy Fish in the case of the missing kelp seeds, this was the only one in the series that I really wanted to show off. I do find it kind of funny though that no matter how many times I LP Steam games now I seem to always have trouble with it and it seems to be a completely different setup every single time. I'll also say that this LP did cause me to discover that there were two different reboots of Brum and they both look... horrifying. So yeah, I guess this LP will get some points docked for that reason. But overall, it was a fun little LP that I'm glad I got to share with people. And now for the complete opposite of a little LP. Up next was my Let's Play of Fire Emblem Awakening. And whoo boy! This LP was a lot of stinking work. Having each episode of a 40 plus part LP be almost an hour long was no easy task. While Phoenix Wright is still in first place as being the longest LP on my channel in terms of episode count, this might have been the longest LP in terms of minute count. It was a long stinking trip and one that could have gone on for over a hundred episodes if I really wanted it to, but I had to draw the line somewhere so here we go. But honestly, I had so much fun with this LP that I really wouldn't throw away the idea of making this a 100% LP. If it weren't for my tight schedule, I actually might have gone through with it, but I know that it would have been a lot of stinking work and not everyone would have wanted to stick around for that long. Maybe in the future we'll be able to return to this game and show off some of the extra content. But for now, I am more than content with what I got to show off. I never would have imagined getting into the Fire Emblem franchise, but Awakening completely sold me, just like it did with the rest of America at the time. It was an absolute joy to re-experience, and it got me really excited for Fire Emblem Three Houses. But here's the thing, I don't think I want to do another Fire Emblem Let's Play if I don't think I could do better than what I've already done. And the fact of the matter is that Awakening is still my favorite in the series. Maybe someday it will be topped. But for now, this may be my one and only time showing off the Fire Emblem franchise on my channel. But it won't be the last time you see a turn-based tactical type of game on my channel. So for those of you who really enjoyed this LP, I hope you'll enjoy getting acquainted with good old Rick in a few years. Trust me, it'll make sense when we finally get to it. Up next is what will now become a yearly tradition on my channel, along with the yearly Mario Party LPs and the yearly Pokemon LPs. And that is my yearly return to the Professor Layton series. The long-awaited Let's Play number 69 was Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. Yeah, a very unfitting game to have as Let's Play number 69, I know, but that's just how things ended up. As for the LP itself, there's honestly not that much I could say about it. It is very similar to my Curious Village LP in terms of the layout and the commentary, but that's sort of what makes me so happy about it. It's not a big and special event that I'm Let's Play in a DS game anymore, I'm just regularly able to do it now. So I'll gladly have this be a chill and easygoing LP with no bumps or issues along the way. Well, aside from the issue of its inconsistent upload schedule. But other than that, it was a really quick and easy thing to record. Especially since I had gotten the DS layout integrated into OBS so I wouldn't have to manually put it together for every episode when I got into editing. So that was really great. And of course, it was great to simply re-experience this game. I remember thinking this game was a thousand times better than Curious Village when I first played it. And I loved the first game initially. But when I got to the second one, I just adored the story and I couldn't possibly imagine them ever topping it. Those feelings definitely came rushing back as I made my way through this game again. And I am so happy to have gotten to share this game with all of you. But if you think this is the best of what Layton has to offer, believe me, you ain't seen nothing yet. I hope you're ready for next year, because Unwound Future is in my opinion, the best of the best in the entire Layton franchise. And finally! The last Let's Play of Year 7 was a project like no other. We ended off this year in a spectacular fashion with a fully voice acted Let's Play of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. <sighs> Why? Why the heck did I want to make this a fully voice acted Let's Play? Well in short, it's because of the story. The Mystery Dungeon games are all about a human waking up in a world of Pokemon, having turned into a Pokemon themselves, and they have no further memory about the life that they once lived. It's a fascinating concept and it remains to this day as one of my favorite stories in video games to date. 
This wouldn't be like my fully voice acted Let's Play of Cave Story. The commentary aspect was completely absent with this one. I presented this LP as a full-blown movie, having all of my commentary be in the character's point of view and narrating the thoughts that were going through my character's head as the story progressed. No mention of game development, no random stories about my personal life, it was a completely immersive experience in the world of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. I always knew that this was how I wanted to present this LP, but I couldn't imagine that I would actually be able to round up an insanely large and kind-hearted cast of dedicated and hardworking voice actors for this Let's Play. I really went overboard with this one. It was an insane project and one that I know would have been overwhelming to ask people to be a part of, but I am forever grateful to have old and new friends alike come together and being willing to help me make this dream project a reality. It was truly a magical experience, getting to see this put together and come to life in editing. And seeing people's reactions to it when it finally started releasing, I wouldn't trade this experience for anything. It was such an honor to work with all of you, and I'll never forget your kindness. I hope you all enjoyed this LP just as much as I enjoyed making it. As for whether or not there'll be any more fully voice acted Let's Plays in the future... Yes. I plan to have one more fully voice acted Let's Play on my channel. I'm pretty sure you have a good idea as to what game it will be. And it will be by far the biggest project I will ever attempt in terms of guest voice actors. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'll tackle that mountain when the time comes. For now, it's time to rest. But not really because there's still so much stuff to do. And that is every single Let's Play I accomplished in year 7. At the end of this year, I now have a total of 70 completed Let's Plays, 1,652 subscribers, and 727,737 total video views. Which is just absolutely crazy. I can't even fit all of my LPs on the front page of my channel anymore. Originally, I had a column dedicated to each individual year of Let's Plays. This made it easy to access each LP and I thought it looked very nice and well organized. However, I guess YouTube wasn't anticipating me keeping up with this for so long. So I now have the first 60 LPs all in one column, while each year starting with year 7 will continue to have its own column like normal. It's the best solution I have for now in which I could keep everything well organized and easy to find on the channel. But knowing my luck, YouTube will just throw out a whole new channel design that'll change everything once again. But let's tackle that proverbial mountain when the time comes, shall we? Right now, I want to take the time to talk about the future, like I usually do with these videos. I was contemplating for a long time about what exactly I wanted to talk about this year. I had finally revealed last year that I was at the halfway point of my Let's Playing journey. I would be concluding this chapter of my life at 120 Let's Plays, and that I would be aiming to only do 10 Let's Plays a year from year 7 onward. While it took a bit longer than I would have liked, I have high hopes that I'll be able to get my schedule back on track for year 8. But of course, as the good old midnight curse seems to go, if I so much as mention any sort of schedule or plans that I have, chances are they won't pull through. But let's see if we could change that this year, shall we? Year 8 is definitely going to be the most challenging year yet, I think. It's got a lot of really intense and exciting projects that I'm both excited and anxious to take on. I can't believe I'm saying this, but expect the return of a certain series that has been on hold on my channel for a very long time. Yeah. It's finally happening. On top of that, expect a lot of experimentation happening this year, in terms of how Let's Plays are done and possibly even some other types of videos that I'll try to put out. You may have already noticed a bit of these new ideas sprinkled throughout Year 7. Earlier in 2019, I actually played through all of the Kingdom Hearts games, or at least watched the cutscenes of them, to get myself prepared for Kingdom Hearts 3's release. I wound up playing Kingdom Hearts 3 from beginning to end on Twitch and was finally able to immerse myself in this franchise that I've been interested in for so, so long. And those of you who follow me strictly on YouTube would have never even known about that, aside from the stream announcement videos that I would post from time to time. I tried to keep up with streaming after the Kingdom Hearts marathon, but it just really wasn't my thing. I'm thrilled that I could finally do it, but I still feel like I need to have a bit more ironed out vision of what I want to be accomplishing with them if I ever want to continue doing it. Some other experimental videos I did this year were my top 10 videos showcasing my most desired newcomers for Smash Ultimate and my top 10 games of 2018, as well as some discussion and reaction videos like when talking about Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated or the new Smash Bros. DLC. I want to continue to branch out into these new ideas while still sticking to my original goal of accomplishing all of the Let's Plays that I set out to do. 
it's all a matter of knowing what all of you want to watch and being able to produce it in a way that's both entertaining and consistently updated. You may have noticed that the unboxing and Dream Diary series silently came to an end on this channel. For the unboxing series, it's simply a matter of me not really liking the idea of that being the first thing that people see when they come to my channel. As for the Dream Diary series, I had intended to keep up with it after making the Dream Diary movie, but I just found myself feeling unmotivated, since I knew for a fact that no future Dream Diary video would be able to top the Dream Diary movie that I had already made. But at the same time, I know that people are fans of those series and wouldn't mind seeing them continue. So I wanted to come up with a plan that could more heavily involve all of you in what I end up creating, while also staying true to what I wanted to do. I'm gonna stop beating around the bush and just come out and say it. I have officially decided to open up a Patreon. Now I know what you may be thinking. In my last anniversary video, I had mentioned that I had no plans to ever make a Patreon. I said that I wasn't deserving of one, and that what I did on my own end for this channel didn't really require one. Well, it's amazing what just a few days can do to you, am I right? Not long after posting last year's anniversary video, my whole life, for lack of a better term, changed for the absolute worst. I don't really want to go into too much detail of everything that happened. I don't really know how much I want to share with all of you because I don't want to end up worrying you all with what's been going on. But Patreon is such a big and very personal thing to be making and asking people to support, so I feel like I owe at least some sort of explanation to all of you. I've said several times over the years that Let's Playing has given me a voice. I truly, truly mean that in every sense of the word. I come from a home where I didn't feel safe to speak. I remember keeping track on a piece of paper throughout my senior year of high school of how many days I went without saying a single word or saying 10 words or less. Out of the 180 days, I did not say a single word for 47 of those days, and I said 10 words or less for 73 of them. I simply never belonged anywhere in the environment around me, and that unfortunately still continues to be the case in my life today. I'm alone, I'm afraid, and I continue to experience new traumatizing events that are haunting me throughout every single day of my life. I wasn't raised with the intention of being capable of anything really. So I'm suffering in the present day as a result of so much time wasted through isolation and abandonment throughout my childhood. And at this point in time, I don't have a home to return to after graduating college next year. Nor do I have anyone in my personal life who I feel safe and trusted with anymore. No friends, no family, nothing. But then YouTube came along, and I had the opportunity to make friends with people all across the world. Surely someone out there would make me feel like I belonged, right? Because no one is brought into this world to be alone. And it's true. You all saved me. With your kindness and acceptance, you gave me a world that I never would have had if I had remained all alone with the people who told me that I wasn't worth the fight. There isn't a single doubt in my mind that this is where I want to be, and that this is what I want to do. And I've been at this for 7 years, and have done 70 projects consisting of over 2,000 videos. While it hasn't been an easy road for sure, I still love being a part of this community, and making new friends and being able to share these experiences with old and new friends alike. But of course, I need to have the reality check that I just can't keep doing this without some help. I'm always afraid to talk about this stuff because I don't ever want it to feel like that I don't appreciate each and every one of you who have already supported me throughout these past seven years. Because I do. But it would be a dream come true, and a saving grace, if my work was able to reach a wider audience, to where I could not only make a living off of what I've poured my heart and soul into for more than a third of my life, but to finally feel validated for it too. I tend to be infamously hard on myself, but I don't want to be at this point in time. I truly believe we've created a ton of very special and heartfelt projects together. I've worked really hard on all of these Let's Plays to make them as enjoyable and high quality as they could possibly be. I strive to make this channel one that emphasizes kindness and acceptance above all else. I try to incorporate unusual and unique experiences that wouldn't usually be seen in a typical LP of these games. And I want to give you all an experience like no other through the help of guest voice actors. It's been a combined effort of myself, the voice actors, the guest artists, the guest composers, 
and the friends and viewers who give their creative input, technical advice, and who simply just keep me going on a daily basis. You all quite literally have given me the world. So I want to be able to give back just as much, and even more, to each and every one of you. But there's one more reason as to why I want my channel to finally take off, now more than ever before. Over the past few years, I've had a lot of light exit my life. And I've seen a lot of light leave the lives of several people around me as well. What I mean is that there have been a lot of people whom I once looked up to for hope and inspiration, who unfortunately turned out to be someone entirely different than what I was led to believe. It's honestly been very heartbreaking to have all these people who taught you these life lessons that you base your entire moral compass around, only to have them betray that trust that you had given them. I've lost a lot of people who I once looked up to in such a short amount of time. It honestly made me question who I even was or what I should even do with myself. It also made me fearful of ever trusting or looking up to anyone ever again. And I know that others have experienced this too, but after a while, I was finally done with it. I was just like, you know what? Forget it. I'll be my own darn inspiration. And I'll continue to create and to reach out to more and more people so that everyone will have someone that they can look up to and feel safe with. So that's why I'm creating a Patreon and why I'm going to be pushing for my channel to become more well known. Because this is what I want to do with my life. Because I suffer immensely from PTSD and social anxiety and I just don't feel safe within a physical working environment. And while I know that social media is just as, well, social as any other place, and that people online could sometimes be even more intense than they could be in person, the love and acceptance that exists in my life online outweighs the bad ones tenfold. And I want to give back to all of you and help somebody else out there who may be in need of something that I can offer them. I know I'm not perfect, I'm not flawless, I'm definitely not a miracle worker, and I know full well that I'm very broken. But I'm still a storyteller, I'm still an entertainer, I'm still trying my best to be a source of hope for people, I'm still trying to recover and to fix myself, I'm still a friend to the lost, an ally to the abandoned, and I want to be a light to those who need to escape the darkness. It's Let's Playing that showed me that I wasn't destined to be alone. So it's Let's Playing that I want to do when helping somebody else in need. Because if I've made it this far, I know that you can do it too. And I truly, truly mean that. So then, what the heck is even going to be in this Patreon already? Well, these tiers may change over time, but here's what I have laid out right now. Our first tier is the $1 Wishmaker tier. This will grant you special access to the typical patron-exclusive posts which will talk frequently about the projects that haven't even been released yet. This reward is available regardless of which tier you decide to support. At $5, we have the Dreamer tier. This will allow you to actually request a personal Dream Diary or unboxing video. These two side series will now become exclusively patron-powered. If you want the unboxing series to continue, you can make a request for any game from my library that you'd like me to unbox in my typical comedic fashion, and you can also request what you'd like me to say or do in the video. As for the Dream Diary series, you could simply request that another entry in that series gets uploaded, and I'll be sure to give special thanks to you for making it happen. For $10, we have the Sweet Dreamer tier. This will allow you to request a top 10 video which I'm really excited about. I've had a really fun time dipping into top 10 discussion videos, and this will allow you to request any topic of your choosing. And it doesn't have to be specifically 10, you could ask me to rank my favorite generations of Pokemon for example. For $15 we have the Lucid Dreamer tier. This will allow you to request an entire live stream. Name the game and the time that works for you, and I'll be sure to stream it and give special thanks to you for making it happen. At $20 we have the Dream Believer tier. This is a very special one because it is directly connected to an entire Let's Play that will be specifically patron powered. And that is my upcoming Let's Play of Kirby Air Ride. A Let's Play that can conceivably go on forever as long as people are requesting it. Not only that, but you can actually be a co-commentator if you so desire. That's really stinking cool, wouldn't you say? If you consider talking to me cool, which I honestly don't think it's all that special, but maybe some people would find it interesting. I'm really excited to see how this Let's Play will evolve over time, so if this interests you at all, feel free to support it. 
At $25, we have the Dream Achiever tier. This will allow you to directly contribute to the magic that goes into my Let's Plays and actually provide voice acting for a series. We can discuss which LPs I have in the works and what character you'd like to voice. You could even choose which part of the game you'd like to appear in, and your social media account will be credited and promoted in every video that you appear in. At $30, we have the Shining Star tier. This one is very special because it will grant you direct access to my most beloved and prized possession, macaroni and cheese. No, I'm not joking. I will just straight up mail you a box of mac and cheese of your choosing if you so desire. I'll even sign it or draw a picture on the box if you'd like. What, that's not exciting enough for you? Okay, fine. I'll also include my other most prized possession, a package of Oreos, as well as one of any of the other rewards from the previous tiers. How does that sound? Pretty cool, right? Well, I've got one more tier for you that just might top it. This is the ultimate tier with the ultimate prize, listed at the ultimate price. Say it with me now. At $69, you'll be given access to the full moon tier. This tier offers you everything. Literally every single reward from all of the previous tiers is yours. A $106 value, all for the affordable price of $69. Yeah, I did math for this tier. That's how you know it's good. So those are all of the tiers that I have available right now. Feel free to go to patreon.com slash midnight and beyond if you'd like to support me in this channel in any way. Even if it's just through spreading the word and telling your friends about it, that still means the absolute world to me and I am forever thankful for that. I'm not sure how successful this will all be, but I do have some goals in mind if this does end up taking off. Just like a lot of my LPs, these goals are a bit overly ambitious, but here's what I have in mind for the time being. If we ever reach a total of $60 a month, I'll update the $1 tier to include a sneak preview of videos before they're even released. Not only that, but I'll also post the yearly Let's Play wallpaper on there, so that patrons can know what the next 10 Let's Plays are going to be on my channel before anybody else. Pretty exciting, right? If we ever make it to $120 a month, I'll open up a Discord server, where we'll start having patron-exclusive movie-slash-TV show live streams. We could watch some of my favorite shows and movies together, or maybe you can introduce me to some of yours. If we ever reach $210 a month, I'll reach out to an animator to give my channel's mascot, Teresa Bell, a brand new look. Yay! All of her expressions will become fully animated, giving my videos a whole new layer of personality to them, all thanks to you. And finally, the most ambitious goal of all. If we ever seriously manage to reach a total of $1,200 a month, then I believe that would be the start of finally being able to say that I was able to do what I love for a living. Quite simply, it would be a dream come true, and it would be thanks to all of you. I did not mean for that to rhyme. Okay, I think I've talked your ears off more than enough by now. This is all really big and exciting stuff to be sharing. I have no idea how it's all going to turn out, but regardless of where I end up with all of this, I wouldn't trade any of these memories from the past seven years with all of you for anything in the world. So thank you so much for continuing to be so kind and caring and accepting of me, despite all of my quirks and flaws and insecurities. It truly does mean the world to me, and is something that I never would have experienced if it wasn't for all of you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for everything. I hope you all look forward to the new and exciting ventures I have planned for all of you in year 8. Thank you all so much for watching, this is Midnight and Beyond, and I will. See you all later. Good night.
Let's dream.